Well, may I invite the next speaker, Dr. Jayantan, to tell us more about the visual and optical performances after unilateral implantation of toric multifocal intraocular lenses. Uh, thank you, sir. My, my presentation will be on the visual and optical performance after an unilateral implantation of the toric multifocal intraocular lens. I have no financial interest in this. So the purpose of the study is to evaluate the visual outcome and the patient satisfaction after an unilateral toric multifocal intraocular lens implantation in patients with cataract and corneal asthma who are unhappy due to the refractive surprise in the other eye which is already operated. So this is a prospective case series where 21 patients with cataract and corneal astigmatism and a motivation for spectacle independence were enrolled for the study after informed concern during the period of January 2021 to August and had a cataract surgery with implantation of toric diffractive multifocal IOL. Postoperatively, at one week, one month, three months, the binocular and uniocular uncorrected distance near and intermediate visual acuities, residual refractive astigmatism, contrast sensitivity, subjective patient satisfaction were evaluated using the questionnaires. A significant cataract and corneal astigmatism warring towering IOL. A patient who had IOL surgery earlier and had a residual refractive error in the other eye and who had a motivation for glass independence, who are self-motivated, realistic expectation patients were included in the study and who had unrealistic expectations, who had significant corneal or macular pathology or previous other ocular procedures were excluded. The IOL power was calculated based on each patient's corneal curvature, axillant using a lens or optical biometer and uh, uh, the SRKT and Barrett formula were used. The pentacam analysis was done to confirm the corneal symmetry, K values and the axis. Toric calculation was performed using the company's own calculator. The surgery was done by a single surgeon and a topical anesthesia with a manual slitla marking done. Uh, there was no intraoperative complication and no sutures were placed at the end of the procedure. Postoperatively, all the postoperative examination including the visual acuity at near and far distance, contrast sensitivity, IOL access, completion of the questionnaire were carried out at one week, one month and three months postoperatively. The uncorrected, corrected distance visual acuity was done at 6 meters using HLN SAT. Intermediate was done at 66 centimeters and near visual acuity was captured at 33 centimeters. The mean visual acuity was expressed as lag mark scale. The statistical analysis was performed on the SPSS version 20 for Windows. The continuous variables were presented as mean plus or minus standard deviation. The Safiro built test tested the normality of the data. Quantitative variables between the study eye, the contralateral eye, binocular, uniocular eye vision were compared using the Wilkinson sign rank test. The two tail p value less than 0.05 were considered to denote statistically significant differences. Subjective assessment, uh, the patient were asked six questions about their satisfaction at the one week, one month, three month postoperative, including a question about their need for glasses, discomfort from glare under the mesopic and photopic condition and they were graded under a three level scale. Uh, the study included 21 patients of which 4 were male and 17 were female. The mean age was 61. Out of the 21, 12 had their right eye operated and 9 had their left eye operated. The mean IOL power was 21. Mean axial length was 22. The mean preoperative astigmatism 1.96 plus or minus 0.5. This is the demography of the other eye which was already operated. So the IOL positioning postoperatively was maintained throughout the postoperative. There was no significant rotation. It was all on axis. Coming to the postoperative visual equity, comparing the study eye log mark visual outcome with the mean stand and standard deviation of 0 0.06 plus or minus 0 0.09 and the contralateral eye log mark visual outcome with mean and standard deviation of 0.3, the mean difference is 0.24. This shows the significance value is 0 0.001, which is lesser than the 0 0.05 value. So the level of significance shows that there is a highly significant difference between the study eye and the contralateral eye. At three months, the patient had a binocular visual equity of 2020 or better. And it was noteworthy that the binocular results were better than each monocular result or all distances during every postoperative visit during the, due to the binocular summation. The bean binocular uncorrected near visual acuity was 0 0.01 log mark unit. The refractive stability was maintained throughout the postoperative period till three months. A total of 90% of the patient responded that they initially only experienced a minimal halo and a glare at one week postoperatively and this increased to 95% at one month. Finally, by three months postoperatively, only one patient responded that they experienced a moderate halo and glare. And none of these patients required glasses for any of their activity for the far, intermediate and the near visions. So only a few studies has reported outcome and of course there was no study which has been performed about the toric multifocal IOL implantation in patient who has already undergone an unsatisfactory cataract surgery with time IOL time ago. At three months in our study, all the patient had a binocular cumulative visual acuity of 2020 and better. The postoperative spherical equivalent refractive accuracy was within 0.5 in all these eyes. Refractive cylinder accuracy within 0.25 in all these eyes. The mean binocular near visual acuity was 0.01 log mark. The reading speed at 40 and 60 
capacity sentiment shows consistent improvement over time uh, not only the objective but also the subjective satisfaction was important for cataract surgery we also used a questionnaire so it shows that the less than 10 percent of the patient were uncomfortable with halo and glare throughout the post-operative period a three months post-op no patient had complaints of severe photo dysphotopsia and none of the patient required glasses for any of their activity so to conclude, toric multifocal IL provided a complete visual restoration with a good visual outcome. Even when implanted unilaterally, the incidence of dysphotopsia was low, spectral independence was high, resulting in a good patient satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, how much you rely on the machine for calculation of the IL part on the machine? Uh, sir, usually we do both uh, optical and immersions. Whenever the agreement between both the results are there, we directly go with it, sir. Do you go for, uh, you know, any any record of the old refraction of the patient because the expectations are very high? Exactly, sir. So, actually I want to share with the audience. We got lens star 900 and the case was mature cataract. And uh, our center is a very high volume sir, uh, center. So I'm doing surgery for last 40 years, I will. And the lens star was giving the power 14 uh, diopter, preoperative. And the otherwise uh, I was uh, already operated somewhere else, six by six. <clears throat> so we believed the lens star, it was a mature cataract. Yeah. And our, our uh, uh, the operator who calculates the lens power has got the experience of 30 years, but he believed on the machine. So we convinced the patient that he, uh, she has got unilateral problem probably. And uh, we missed the conventional method of calculating. We were so excited to have the machine. And the post-operative, the error was plus four. The machine was wrong. wrong. So this happened last week only. So we changed the lens. So my suggestion is, after doing one lakh IOL surgeries, don't purely rely on the machine. Go for your sixth nerve sense and try to check with the refractive errors if the patient is having, because expectations are very high for multifocal. The patient is spending money, so you must be doubly sure. Don't be, uh, don't be, uh, rely, don't rely on the machine only. So, Dr. Bharti, Dr. Bharti, what do you say? We should go blindly for the machine. We rely, we should rely or I, I feel that uh, the optical biometer is not going to work very well in the mature. mature cataract. Yeah, I, I agree. So, I think the, the so what? So what? Uh, what should you do for the mature cataract? Yeah. Uh, sir. Go back to conventional system. Sir, I was actually lucky enough because uh, my father is an ophthalmologist and he does a immersion for the last 40 years. That's so, I rely on in lens set. My father does it on immersion. We compare it, sir. So, yeah. all these patients had a comparative uh, IOL power. That's when we implanted it. That's my message is if you, if you invest 50, 60 lakhs, still you should believe yourself. Go for old refractive error the patient is carrying because mostly they are educated uh, uh, patients and they are carrying old refractions. So you must counter check. Okay. That is my point. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.